Okay. Ah, there it is. Very good. Okay. So, um, all right. So we talked about the local period domain, the local Torelli theorem. Um, now let's talk about the, the global period domain and the global Torelli theorem. All right. So, uh, see now. Okay, there we go. Okay, so how do we how do we make the global period domain? Okay, so when we look at H two of X Z, right? That's a that's a discrete kind of thing. So um, the idea here is that we can pretty much kind of uh, identify all of the integral cohomology groups of all of these irreducible holomorphic symplectic manifolds uh, of a given dimension, you know, so uh, with given, um, so you have, so basically each time you can, you can take the lattice structure of the second cohomology, right, and then, uh, and then you can, uh, you can also take the boville bogomol of quadratic form on it, um, in fact, usually when people talk about a lattice, they, they, they kind of implicitly mean that there is already a quadratic form on it, right? So it's not just a, a, a Z module, it already has also a quadratic form on it, right? So when I say a lattice, I actually mean that I already have a quadratic form on it, right? So maybe, maybe I, should, I should write that. So um, definition. A lattice is the data of a free Z module, which I will call gamma of finite rank with an integral non-degenerate quadratic form. Which, we, which we will denote Q sub gamma. So this, this Q is intrinsically comes with the lattice. So the cohomology of a, um, the second, you know, H2 of XZ is naturally such a thing, right? So it is it is a free Z module of finite rank, and it has an integral non-degenerate quadratic form, which is the boville bogomolov form. So we can we can sort of forget. Uh, we can look at, uh, in some sense, we can look at all of the um, uh, all, of, all of the hyperkähler manifolds that have the same lattice, right? And we can sort of map them all into the same period domain. So for a lattice, we can define a period domain. So the so next definition, given a lattice, gamma Q sub gamma, um, the period domain, is, and we will call it Q gamma. It's just like before. So Q gamma is by definition, the set of alphas such that Q gamma of alpha is zero and Q gamma of alpha plus alpha bar is positive, right? And this naturally sits inside Q gamma bar, which is by definition, the set of alphas um, such that Q gamma of alpha is zero. And this guy lives, lives inside the projectivization of the lattice tensored with C over Z, right? So I, I make a complex vector space, I projectivize it, and then I can define a quadric in it using my quadratic form Q sub gamma, right? And then again, I have, a, I have a period domain in a similar way, right? Um, and then we're going to kind of map all of the uh, holomorphic symplectic forms with a given whose, um, whose H2 can be sort of identified as a lattice with a given fixed lattice, we're going to map it into this period domain and that will be our global, global Torelli map. So, um, 
So let me, so we're going to construct first a moduli space of marked holomorphic symplectic manifolds. So let me start with a definition, a marking of some holomorphic manifold, uh, his, hol sorry, irreducible holomorphic manifold X is a lattice isomorphism. Or if you like, you can, you can, if you want to be a little bit more precise, you can just call this a gamma Q gamma marking, right? It's a lattice isomorph isomorphism phi between H2 of XZ, QX tilde, and gamma Q gamma. Okay. And this pair. X phi is called a marked manifold, marked manifold. Um, then two marked manifolds. X phi and x prime phi prime are isomorphic if there exists a holomorphic map uh, and actually a, um, a biholomorphic map such that uh, phi prime is the composition of phi with f and we write With f upper star, sorry. Uh, if you have a map from f from x to x prime, it will induce, uh, you know, it will induce a map in cohomology, right, from h two of uh, x prime z into h two of x z, right, and then I can compose this with the marking of um, of x, right, and then I get um, I get I get phi composed with f over star, right? So we, and then we write, we write it like this. We write x phi is isomorphic to x prime phi prime. Okay, so it's, it's very natural, right? So you, um, you define the isomorphism between marked manifolds. And then what's the moduli space? So the moduli space of marked irreducible holomorphic manifolds holomorphic symplectic manifold sorry is the following so I will call it M sub gamma, gamma for the lattice. It's by definition, the set of all of these marked pairs modulo the equivalence relation, which is the isomorphism that we defined in number three. All right, so we have a moduli space of marked manifolds, right? And then, um, So what do we um, so what do we do? So then we have we have a um, uh, uh, sorry. So what? So that we have the global period map, right? Uh, maybe let me that into another definition on the next page.
what's the global period map? It's we're going to call it P. And it goes from M gamma into Q gamma, which we said is inside Q gamma bar, which is inside P of gamma tensored with C over Z. And what does it do? It takes the pair X phi and it sends it to, well, if you have, you, the marking gives you a map from H2 of XZ into gamma. So you can take the image of sigma under that marking phi, right? Phi is the map. And then you can take its point in the projective space P of gamma tensor C. Okay. Um, so, okay, so then um, we have a version of the global Torelli theorem, right? So, due to Verbitsky. Uh, the map P is generically injective on each connected component. of M gamma. Okay. So, um, so let me, uh, let me explain a little bit about, you know, how, uh, how this, um, how this will work. So, um, So normally, I mean, for those of you who are a little bit familiar with Torelli maps, right? Um, this is not exactly what people usually mean by global Torelli maps, by global Torelli, right? So this is not a usual, this is weaker than a usual global Torelli theorem. Okay, so uh, let me give you uh, some examples, for instance. So in the, the strongest global Torelli theorem that we have is for complex tori. So um, two complex tori are isomorphic if and only if uh, their first cohomologies are isomorphic. Okay, so this is basically the strongest global Torelli theorem that you can have. So you, you're basically saying that your complex torus is fully determined by its um, by its first cohomology, and you're not even talking about a quadratic form here. So you don't need you don't even need a quadratic form. All right. So this is this is the strongest you can have. The next strongest global Torelli that you have is for is for curves. So. So what do you have for curves or Riemann surfaces, if you like? So two Riemann surfaces are isomorphic if and only if their first cohomologies are isomorphic, uh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Um, I, I should have said isomorphic as Hodge, as Hodge structures here. 
right? You do want the, the heart structure. Okay. Uh, so for Riemann surfaces, well, you, you need a little bit more. So their first cohomologies are isomorphic as harsh, as harsh structures. And you also want the intersection forms um, to, to, be, to, be, to correspond to each other. And under the given under, under isomorphism, Um, the intersection forms on the two curves coincide. And we will say for short, we will say that the, the two, the first cohomologies are isometric. The third example, which is slightly less strong, I will explain how this is less strong. For 2K3 surfaces, are um, isomorphic if and only if um, their second cohomologies. And actually, sorry, instead of iso I, I, what I mean here is Hodge isometric, iso isometric because um, that indicates also that you preserve the Hodge structure. Okay, their second cohomologies are Hodge isometric. Okay, so. Um, so these are the best uh, Torelli theorems we have. So we see, you see that in this case, you know, with the uh, with the global Torelli for for uh, hypercalar manifolds, uh, we're, that's not what we're saying. We're just saying. So the map P, what does it do in some sense? Um, so if you're um, so you you send you have a you have an is isometry between the second cohomology of X and this fixed lattice, right? And the image, when you take the image of the symplectic form phi, right, uh, sorry, sigma, when you take the image of the symplectic form sigma, right, sigma generates, so um, this is an aside if you like, so note that sigma generates H to zero, right? Inside H2 of Xc. And if we have the, the quadratic form, so you know, you know that QX tilde of sigma is zero. And also, this is something that I didn't say, but this is true usually in general. If, you, if I look at sigma perp, the perp for, uh, if I look at the orthogonal complement for my quadratic form, right? Then this is actually um, H to zero. Uh, direct sum h11. So if you know, if you give yourself uh, the the line that sigma spans inside h2 of x to c, then you, if you have the quadratic form, then you also have its perp, which means you also have h20 direct sum h11. And then, uh, well, uh, you know, sigma bar generates h02, right? So you pretty much have everything. So, so this means that you know, this, the class of sigma right, determines the Hodge structure. On H2 of Xc. So it determines the Hodge decomposition, right? It, it determines the H2 zero. It determines the H20 and you know the H11, and it also determines 
the H02. So if you have your, if you're saying that uh, if my global Torelli map period, if my global period map had been injected, then I would have a Torelli theorem, right? I would know that if I, if I know that there's only, if two manifolds map to the same point of the period domain, that means that they have the same sigma and they have the same quadratic form. That means then they have the same intersection form, they have the same quadratic form, and then they also have the same harsh structure, right? But that, that's not what I'm saying. I'm only saying it's generically injected, right? So for, um, for irreducible holomorphic symplectic manifolds, Global Torelli actually fail, fails. And there are examples. Um, the first example is, um, uh, is due to the bar uh, in uh, 1984. Um, so, he produced um, non-isomorphic, so there exists non-isomorphic however bimeromorphic compact hyperkähler manifolds. with Hodge isometric second cohomologies. Um, they were also, these guys were also not algebraic. Uh, so, okay, so people saw this and they thought, well, um, these guys are bimeromorphic. Now, if you look at K3 surfaces, if two K3 surfaces are bimeromorphic, in fact, you can show that they are, in fact, isomorphic. So people, you know, people thought, well, maybe this isn't too bad. If, if these are the only counterexamples, then maybe, you know, still saying that, okay, global Torelli, if two, if two um, polymorphic synthetic manifolds are Hodge isometric, then they're in fact bimeromorphic. That's not a that's not a bad thing. That's still a pretty strong theorem, and that's nice. But that was uh, <laughs> that's not true either. There were other counterexamples much more recently. Uh, this was Namikawa, and I'm not saying these are the only counterexamples. I think there are others in the literature. Um, this is not an exhaustive list, but these are. Uh, the ones that kind of jumped at me. So um, there are, he produced an example of non-birational, so projective, four-dimensional hyperkähler manifolds. So it's like the worst possible thing you could get. They're the smallest possible dimension that they could be. They're projective and they're not birational um, with Hodge isometric second homologies. Okay. All right, so, so there is no hope for, for a real global Torelli. The best thing you can hope for is basically what, uh, what Verbitsky did, but uh, there is, it's still, it's still, you know, this is uh, the other open question that what I wanted to mention. So question, so is it possible? Is there a good characterization? Why by good, we have no idea what good actually means, right? Uh, 
of holomorphic symplectic manifolds irreducible ones uh, that are Hodge isometric, Hodge Hodge isometric, but not isomorphic. So can you, so can, what kind of, so people were hoping that maybe they could say, okay, if they're Hodge isometric, then, then at least they're birational, but that's not the case, uh, you know, that they're bimeromorphic, but that's not the case. There are counterexamples for that. So is there, so what else can you say? You know, if two things are Hodge isometric, can you say anything geometric about them, right? How do you, how do you link them together geometrically and not just via their second cohomologies? Okay, so that's, as you can imagine, that is a hard question. Uh, um, so no idea what the answer would be. I have a question. Um, so along this line, um, if you, what is, what is it about, Genericity that uh, makes it injective in Verbitz's theorem. Is there anything particular of which? No, the proof doesn't tell you anything about that. I mean, the proof just uh, just looks at the map globally, and sort of shows that um, it has to be generically injected. But it doesn't tell you anything about you know where it's going to be generically injected, you know, and why exactly or anything like that. So yeah. The proof is just a clever trick, basically. So uh, that's the one of the problems with clever tricks. You don't get much insight from them, but yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, it's just not. Um, yeah, let me think a little bit. Um, Yeah, basically, yeah, that's it. I mean, the proof is just a clever trick. It it uses like it uses like simply connectedness of of uh, of the period domain, and and that's basically it. So you don't you don't get anything from it really. Um, so yeah. Anyway, um, I could I could say something about the proof if people are interested. Uh, maybe tomorrow. I mean, I I don't know. I mean, tomorrow is the last lecture, so I'm 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 willing to uh, let people kind of um, direct me a little bit into what they want me to do. I could talk a little bit about the proof of the global Torelli, or I could uh, actually one thing that I will definitely do is talk about twister lines and twister spaces, and. Um, so I was thinking either to talk about the proof of global Torelli or, or maybe talk about hyperholomorphic sheaves or I don't think I can really do both. Um, so um, yeah, and I could say just a few words maybe about Lagrangian structures. Um, yeah, anyway, does anybody want to express any preference or? Okay, I can also say something about all of it, uh, you know, just keep it, um, try to make it fit into the time that, that, that is left. Um, all right, so let's see, how much time have I got not right now? Uh, 10 minutes. Uh, 10 minutes? Yes. Um, 10 minutes, okay, all right, thanks. Okay, so let me say in the 10 minutes that are left then, let me say something about um, about this um, this m gamma, this modularized space of marked. So let me remind you what m gamma was. M gamma is uh, so m gamma is the modularized space of marked irreducible holomorphic symplectic manifolds, right? We 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 defined it as the quotient of the set of all pairs, you know, all marked pairs of holomorphic symplectic manifolds on the marking but modulo isomorphism, right? Okay, so um, one of the things that are a little bit uh, surprising is that um, M gamma, so we can, so just a, a little bit, a few words about M gamma, let's say.
and the terrarium and the, um, the period map. Right. Okay, so um, <clears throat> one can use, so um, you can show that, so we define the local period map and then we define the global period map. Of course, the two, the two are, the two, uh, the, you know, the local period maps glue together to give you the global period map. So let me explain a little bit about that. So, and what that gives you in the end that is that it tells you something about M gamma. So we can use, the local period maps to show that M gamma is a smooth non hausdorff analytic complex analytic space. All right, so how does, how would that work? So if you, if you give yourself, given an irreducible horomorphic symplectic manifold, um, we can choose a marking. from H2 of XZ to gamma. And then we have the Kurnishi space, right? So the Kurnishi family uh, X to death of X. We saw that this is locally isomorphic. Uh, via the local period map. To the period domain. So we can use we can use this isomorphism which do you remember the local period domain. Um, actually, sorry, let me let me uh, let me um, explain this a little bit better. Um, so you have your marking, right? So via the marking, what you can do, you can write down. So the marking gives you, uh, whoops, the marking uh, gives an isomorphism between the, um, the local, uh, the local period domain, right, which we called QX, and the global period domain Q gamma, right? So you can just, uh, you, you identify H2 of XZ with gamma, the quadratic forms coincide, so then the, the quadrics map into each other and positivity is again the same because the two quadratic forms agree with each other, right? So you get an isomorphism between the local period domain and the global period domain, right? And then what you have is that the, uh, the Kronishi family uh, x over def of x is locally isomorphic to the period domain. Q gamma via the the you know via the, the local Torelli theorem. Okay. All right. So so basically, um, so this is so this is what we've got, right? So Q X is uh, isomorphic to. <clears throat> QX 
is isomorphic to Q gamma, right? You map this into P H2 of XC. And this one, we can identify it with P of gamma tensor C over Z, right? <clears throat> These guys are isomorphic. So then if you take, um, and in here, right, inside this QX, you have an open ball, so a, a small neighborhood in the deformation space of X, right? Um, so, so, then, so then what you can do is that these open balls, so the open balls above, give you a covering. So cover um, the, the, the moduli space of marked holomorphic synthetic manifolds and gamma, right? And the analytic structures, On the intersections of two different, on the intersections of different open balls, coincide because the Kronishi family. This was the nice property of the Kronishi family that it is universal for all of its fibers. Right, so if I take the Kronishi family of X zero and then X T, they are the same Kronishi family. So these open balls inside the marked marginalized, marginalized space of markings, um, when they overlap, they have the same complex analytic structure. Okay, so then, so then you see that then the, these balls, they will cover M gamma, and this shows you that M gamma is a union of balls. So then you, you can put this complex, this, this smooth complex analytic structure on M gamma. <clears throat> yeah. So, uh, okay, so that's what I wanted to say today. And tomorrow, uh, I think I will start by uh, talking about the uh, uh, twister spaces and twister lines. And maybe I'll say a few words about uh, Verbitsky's proof of uh, global Torelli. And uh, then uh, I will probably say a little bit about Lagrangian structures and uh, hyperholomorphic sheaves. So I will kind of wrap up, you know, by making us some kind of a summary of the other of some of the other important uh, things that people do with holomorphic symplectic manifolds. Uh, are there any questions? Uh, can I ask a question? Sure. Uh, so, in the counterexample found uh, by Namikawa. Yes. So it should be that the two. Uh, Hyperkähler manifolds lie into different connected components of the moduli space. Is it right? No, no, no. Uh, no, actually, they don't necessarily. The, see, the thing is that this um, the moduli space is not Hausdorff. So but, that's what's going on. So it's the non-Hausdorff points, actually. But uh, so you, if the yeah. points are are. Uh, if I well remember, if two points are uh, inseparable, they should give uh, two bimeromorphic hyperkähler manifolds. That's why I asked the. Oh, is that is that true? I mean, I, well, I, 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 okay, that that I'm I'm uh, I'm not sure about, but I, I okay. You're saying the non hausdorff points always come from bimeromorphic manifolds. Yeah, because if I remember, if I will remember, uh, I mean, oh. from the paper of uh, Markman. Yeah. He said that the fiber, if I fix a connected component of the moduli space and I yeah. pick the, the fiber of a point in the period uh, domain, I, yeah. should give, I should obtain a set of points which are pairwise inseparable. And so this should be pairwise uh, okay. Can you say that again? If you take the fiber of what? 
uh, I fix a connected component uh, uh, of, uh, of the, the modular space. space. Right. Yes. Uh -huh. I choose uh, an odd structure. I mean, a point yes. in the period domain. Uh, yes. I pick the fiber of this point in the yes. in the connected component I fixed. Yes. I should obtain uh, uh, points, uh, a set of points. I mean, uh, which are uh, pairwise uh, inseparable. Yes, that's right. But that doesn't mean they're bim bimeromorphic, does it? Well, it, it should it... be the next uh, point in the survey of uh, uh, Markman, which says that. Uh, uh huh. I see. Okay. Uh, it looks like a lot of people are agreeing with you. So, <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, all right. Um, let me. Um, okay. Uh, yeah. Thanks. Uh, sure. So that that's why I. I thought uh, that uh, I, I, see. I, mean, okay. I don't know the okay. example, so. Oh, I see, I see. So that's why you think the example that they, they belong to different, exactly. different components. Uh huh. Right, where's the example? Right. Okay. Uh, let me think about all this and we'll discuss it tomorrow. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Other questions? Okay. Uh, looks like there are no other questions. Maybe we can stop recording then. Okay. Stop. In case there are more questions, one.